Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I am sitting down to film my first new makeup try on of 2024. I actually think I have a full face of new makeup down to the details like brows and mascara, everything. I also have a couple new skincare items and some new brands to me that I'm excited to try. So I have some stuff from a brand called OG Beauty. It's a new to me luxury brand. I have the new makeup by Mario lipsticks. There's just a lot going on. So I'm gonna jump right in with skincare. I woke up with a breakout on my face, um, just right here. I'm testing some new skincare. I think that could be it, but you know, who knows? I've already done my skincare except for SPF, and I'm really excited to talk about this because it is something I've been testing for a few months now. So this is the Prequel Sun Barrier SPF 50, and it's a mineral-based SPF. This is a lab sample that I've been testing for several months, and it's one of my favorite mineral SPFs I've ever tried. It's so beautiful. The finish is so lightweight. You would never know it's a mineral SPF. And as you guys know, Prequel was one of my favorite brand launches of 2023. So they're starting out this year really strong. Like I mentioned, this is a lab sample. This is not what the actual product looks like. It comes in like a beige tube. It is $22 for 50 milliliters. And let me just show you the texture. So it comes out as this slightly pinkish beige cream and it just sinks in so nicely. It leaves a bit of a glow, but really it's just super, super lightweight. So I'm going to apply that. I just like to take a few different drops around my face and make sure that it's well distributed. It's also fragrance free, which is great. It uses zinc oxide. It's a great option for sensitive skin, honestly. I haven't seen this yet because it just came out. I haven't seen how this looks on deeper skin tones, so I can't speak to that quite yet, but I do think it's among the most sheer mineral SPFs I've tried. And of course, you know, I'll never say a mineral SPF is completely sheer because it's not. That's just the nature of mineral SPFs. But this is among the most sheer mineral SPFs um, I've tried. So the brand calls this a natural radiant finish, and they also say it's semi-transparent, which I think is the most honest mineral SPF marketing language I've seen. A lot of mineral SPF marketing claims to be sheer, even if it's not, so I like the transparency there, pun intended. I think I am going to go in with brows while my SPF is setting. Usually I just take a Q-tip and I clean up my brows just to get any excess product out of them. And um, I always like to give my SPF a few minutes to set before I go in with base makeup. I think I'm going to try the Bodyography Epic Brow. They sent this over to me, I think, a few months ago. I just haven't gotten around to trying it. And this is a dual-sided brow product. So there's a clear brow gel and then there's a brow pen, like a liquid brow pen. And it says to go in with the clear brow gel first and then to go in with the pen. So I'm gonna see how this goes. I really like this. Um, Packaging. Oh, interesting. Really cute, tiny, angled spoolie. And um, I actually just remembered this morning that I have a bodyography code. It's 15% off. If you care to use it, it's Becca15. Um, so, what I do for brows is I like to back comb and sort of like work the product into each brow hair and then I set it in place. I really like this tiny, tiny spoolie, it's cute. Okay, this is giving me some light sculpting. This is not going to be your laminating kind of brow gel, but it doesn't claim to be that, so I'm not mad at that. You can see it did give me a little bit of sculpting and reshaping like towards the tail of my brow, especially compared to this side where my brow hairs grow downwards. So I'm gonna do the other side. It is kind of a wet feeling gel, so you do notice like as it's setting down. I feel like you guys haven't seen Smidge in a while. Say hi. She's so big now. She's a big girl. She's probably around um, like nine to 10 pounds. If you haven't met Smidge before, 
She's our kitten that um, Hannah, Hannah Louise Poston, rescued at her old house in LA, and then we adopted her. <laughs> she hates being held. <laughs> She's gonna be three this year, which is wild. And then we have another cat, Ghost, who is going to be seven or eight this year. They love each other. Um, okay, this brow gel, it's, it's definitely drying down. It's not the kind of product I typically go for, but it'll work for today. Um, I just say that because I typically need something with a lot of hold for my brow type. Um, but then I'm gonna go in with just some little hair strokes and this always takes me like deep, deep focus. So it's hard for me to talk. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned the shade I'm using. I'm using brown, and there's also a shade called ash. There's like a light shade and a deep shade. It's maybe a little bit warm for me. It's kind of like a yellow undertone brown. And I typically like something much ashier, like almost gray for my brows. My go-to shade for a product like this is the Milani um, Weekend Brow, their brow pen in espresso. Yeah, you can tell that's very warm for me. I might have to do like a brow, a cooler toned brow powder through this. It's like dark and warm, not my favorite. All right, let's just keep it moving. Um, for base, I am trying a new brand to me and it's called OG Beauty. They sent over their sculpted complexion stick, a couple of brushes, as well as their golden contour collection. I swatched these and they look so stunning and I think this brand is really giving Westman Atelier a run for their money. So let me just show you what these look like. So this is a set of three products. They have a couple different colorways of this. So you get like a bronzer, a blush, and a highlighter. And the foundation stick looks like this. Even the packaging is very similar to Westman. You've got the like expensive magnetic cap. It's very weighty. I wouldn't be surprised if they have the same packaging like distributor. So I have the foundation stick in the shade Banyan 3.0 W, warm. And I think it's going to work for me. It's a little bit yellow potentially for me right now. Definitely could work as a summer shade, but I have a feeling it's going to sheer out. So I'm just gonna give it a shot. I also have their, um, what is this called? The blender brush, which is, oh my God, <laughs> so soft. It's really nice. It's um, slightly angled and oh my gosh, it feels so soft. I really am into that. Um, so let me tell you about this um, foundation stick. They actually call it a skin perfecting tinted moisturizer. So they don't, they don't even call it a foundation. And they say it is um, nourishing buildable formula with pure mineral pigments. Dab and swipe directly to prepped or bare skin and blend seamlessly with fingers or the brush. And then you can apply additional layers for buildable coverage. So I'm just going to apply directly and see what happens. The SPF has definitely set. And um, let's just start maybe with one side of the face. I can definitely tell it's a little bit warm for me right now, but if it does sheer out, it'll be fine. It's blending out really nicely. The danger with stick foundations I have found in my experience is that um, they can be very waxy and in order to like bind them together. And um, that can potentially lead to a shine especially for people with oil, oily skin like mine. So um, I'll have to report back on how it wears and I always do report back in a, a pinned comment on how things wore at the end of the day. It's definitely a bit more buttery so far than the um, Merit stick foundation, for example. And even the Westman, uh, I think the Westman has a bit more stiffness. This feels a little bit like it has a bit more glide. But it does kind of look like nothing on the skin actually. And this shade is really working for me. I'm kind of surprised. I think because it is so sheer, 
what when I swatch it, you see a really saturated version of the shade, but the undertones work for me. So that is kind of just one sheer layer blended out with a brush. It is very natural. I don't think this is going to be buildable, like buildable maybe to a medium coverage, but it's definitely not a full coverage kind of thing. But I do really like the way the skin looks and it feels really weightless, like for a stick foundation. Sometimes stick foundations can feel a little bit heavy. And um, sometimes I feel that with the Westman foundation, but this does not feel that way. So I'm gonna apply to the other side. I also like that it's not like tugging at my skin to blend out. Okay, this side I have more going on. I have a couple of like healing breakouts and then I have a breakout here. So I'm gonna see if I can build up and um, try to get a little bit more coverage. And then to build coverage, I'm actually going to stipple instead of swipe. When you swipe, you move around more product, and when you stipple, you're kind of keeping that pigmentation in place. Okay, now that I've applied in a few different ways, I have some thoughts. I think this is a light coverage foundation. I think it really is a tinted moisturizer in stick form. It's not even a medium coverage. I think the skin looks really beautiful and luminous. It's not like a stick that sets down by any means. It's actually staying kind of dewy and radiant. I think if you have dry skin or mature skin, you'll like this because it has this really beautiful silky glide. And I like how thin the formula feels on the skin, but it's not buildable. Um, and I am noticing that, and this can be a thing with um, stick formulas, that it's kind of emphasizing my T-zone where I have more noticeable pores. Sometimes I find that um, wax formulas, because it's not a liquid where it doesn't kind of sink into the uneven texture of the skin, they can actually like gather around the pores rather than sinking into like the textured areas of the skin. And I'm noticing a little bit of that just around my T-zone if I'm being really picky. Um, and I'm definitely gonna need a different kind of concealer for actual coverage of pigmentation and probably around the eyes too. Although if I were going for this, I wouldn't be going for a high coverage day anyway. And I don't mind the, um, kind of luminosity it's giving me around the eyes. But that's just me being picky. I actually really do like the way this looks. I am uncertain how it will wear throughout the day because it's not setting down, so I'll report back on that. I think for concealer, um, I don't know if these are gonna work for me. Kosa sent over um, a couple of extended shades to their concealer range, and I have had um, mixed experiences, I guess you could say, with their concealer. I haven't used it in a long time, and I actually found that it expired very quickly. I think a lot of people have found this. It's a clean foundation, um, so you know it's not that much of a surprise. But they sent over 03 Warm, 2.3 Neutral, and 02 Warm, which might be like a little bit too light for me. I'm just gonna use 03 Warm, which is the deepest shade, um, and we'll see. They also sent over a cute little pointed sponge. I like that. Um, I'm lazy, so I'm not gonna get it wet. Uh, let's see if 03 Warm, that's really bright. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work for me. I feel like in the past I used um, shade like five or six, and so I'm not sure why they sent me such a bright shade, but um, it's definitely brightening. I do recall how creamy this concealer is and how um, hydrating it is. And I think that's why so many people do love it. I think it's like a medium coverage concealer. That's so brightening. <laughs> I never go this bright around my under eye. I generally like to stay like close to my complexion color, like my natural complexion color. But um, for today's purposes, We'll go for it. I actually really like the shape of this sponge too. That is so bright. I feel like it looks, it looks weird. <laughs> it's like matching my white shirt under my eyes. I don't know if I can just, I can't keep it like this. I feel so weird. I'm gonna take my House Labs concealer um, in 21 light medium 
just add some pigment. Even this shade is like kind of light for me actually, but um, it is a shade I can wear around my whole face. I'm just gonna add back some of my like natural <laughs> skin tone. That is a, a good reminder for why I don't like to go really bright around my under eyes. I think it just looks so, I don't know, it made me look ghostly and kind of scary. That's still extremely bright for my taste, but um, it's better. <laughs> and then I'm just going to spot conceal with my NARS Soft Matte in um, uh, Custard. This is when I need like heavy duty spot concealing. That's when I go for this. Well, this is off to um, an interesting start. All right, let's move on to cheeks. I'm gonna use all three of the OG um, collection. What is this called? The, um, the Golden Contour Collection. So let me swatch these for you. The blush is really beautiful and um, also very similar to Westman. Um, the cheek products come in white and then the foundation stick is a little bit of like a gray. The um, bronzer is actually like a shimmery bronzer. Um, so that is Topaz, this is called Amber. And then there's a peachy highlighter called Carnelian and it's so beautiful. I don't really go for pink highlighters, but this actually like really caught my attention when I was swatching it. Going to start with Amber. Um, the bronzer you can already tell is very, very sheer. And they call all of these the sculpted face stick. So there are a bunch of different shades. There are different um, depths of bronzer. There are matte bronzers. There are radiant bronzers. And then like different color highlighters and blushes. So they're all within this um, sculpted face stick collection. Like I said, I don't typically, I'm just gonna use the um, base brush. I don't typically go for a shimmery bronzer, so I'm curious how this will look. It's not too glittery though, so I think, I think it'll work. And overall, I think with the brand aesthetic, it definitely works. Their whole thing seems to be no makeup makeup, easy makeup, makeup on the go. It's nice, it's actually very thin as a formula, it's not um, like a thick cream, so I'm able to get a nice sheer application of it. And it's actually surprisingly not as warm as I was thinking. I kind of like that this is a cool tone bronze. I think that actually works with the sheerness of this. Let's do the um, blush next. I'm gonna go in with the same brush. I really, by the way, love this blush shade. I like the earthiness of this rose. It's like a brownie rose. Really, really pretty. It's a very easy everyday shade, especially for my skin tone. I think this is a good like light medium to medium skin tone blush shade. I guess this is called the Golden Contour Collection, not like a golden bronze. So with that cool toned amber, and then with this, it actually is giving me a golden contour. I like this a lot. And then for the highlighter, I think I'm just going to apply with fingers and just very lightly along the tops of the cheekbones. Ooh, that's really, really pretty. I hope that comes across on camera. It's like a peachy highlighter. Obviously on my hand where I swatched it, that's a very concentrated swatch. It doesn't really look too, too pink on the cheeks, but it looks so pretty paired with that blush actually. Brings out the peachy tones. I also like that as I'm tapping it on, it's not picking up the makeup underneath, which tells me that all the makeup works in thin layers and not like thick, cakey, tacky layers on the cheeks. That's when you'll lift up makeup as you're applying with fingers. That's not happening with this. It's a really elegant formula. And for um, a balm highlighter, it's not actually really sticky either, which I like. That was a good course correction. I really, really like this cheek trio. And if you're curious about the brand, I would say start here. Um, I really like these three together. I like them each individually. 
I just like the way they perform and feel on the skin. For eyes, I actually have a product that's not new on the market, but it's a new shade to me, and it's the um, Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Oyster Pearl. I know you guys love this, and I've wanted to try this shade forever. I didn't have it, and then they sent it to me in a PR package over the holidays. So I'm gonna go for just a simple wash of color. I do wanna create a bit of a base, so I'm gonna take my Patrick Ta Major Dimension three and just do like a really boring like slightly sculpted eye just to create a bit of contour and definition before i go in with that really light shimmery cream shadow i really like the um lower row on this these cooler tones i've been wearing a lot of cool tones lately it's so not me typically but I think that's just the general direction. Beauty trends have been moving in for a while and I've come to realize they actually can look good on me <laughs> and my skin tone, especially in the winter when I'm much more pale. For the shadow, I'm going to take a brush, the What's Up Beauty R106. It's just like a flat blender brush and I'm gonna dip right into this formula. I do know this formula very well, so. I'm not, it won't, there won't be any surprises. Ooh, that's so pretty. Really nice shade. You know what? I can't tell if it's because I have the shadow underneath, but this is actually a lot taupier and has a bit more warmth to it than I was expecting. I always thought it would be a lot more silvery, but let me swatch it on my hand actually. Yeah, there's like, interestingly, this like pink undertone to it. Do you see what I'm saying? If you haven't tried this formula, it's an oldie and a goodie and a bestseller for a reason. It's just easy, it's moussey, it's not too wet, it's easy to blend, doesn't take a lot of work. Anyone can apply it, even if you're not good at eyeshadow, even if you just like blend it out with a finger. I just realized I totally forgot to powder. I do have a new powder. This is from Klee Cosmetics, CLE, and it's their Hydro, Hydro Blot Loose Powder. And it says it's oil control at its finest. So it says it has all the benefits of an oil control powder without compromising your natural glow. I'm really curious if this is going to be like the By Terry Hydra powder. I wonder if it's a similar concept. So you've got a puff, then the thing pops up. And then you've got a net and the powder in there. I actually have really been liking using a powder puff. I kind of saturate the puff and then I work it into the puff like in the cap and then press, ooh, oh my God, it is like the By Terry powder. It feels wet to touch. Yeah, it definitely, it feels wet to touch, but it's not wet, it's so weird. I actually really like the way it feels going on. It feels nice and cooling. Yeah, I do think the powder leaves a glow for sure. Like it's still giving me a satin finish, which is what it claims to do, but it also claims to oil control. So I'll have to report back on that aspect of the powder at the end of the day. I do have a new mascara to try, so I'm curling my lashes. For mascara, I have the What's Up Beauty Watch Me Mascara. This is not a new, new release. This came out a couple of months ago, but I've just had so many open mascaras. But I was really curious about this because the wand is really interesting. So it's dual sided. So the top side is natural bristles and the bottom side is like silicone combs. I don't know if you can see the actual, they're very, very small like combs on the bottom side. And it's supposed to be lengthening and volumizing. For me, no mascara holds a curl. So I do go in with my Peri Para just to prime and hold the curl, I have to. I guess I'll go in with the lengthening side first, like that comb. Ooh, I actually really like that. 
the comb itself is kind of spiky. And so it's working through all of my very, very fine little baby lashes. I've been using my NYK1 Lash Serum again, and it makes such a big difference. It's giving me so much time to build the lash. This is with mascara, and this is without. The comb also really doesn't pick up too much product, like on this comb side, so I feel like I'm able to get such a nice, like, thin but consistent application. Okay, my lashes never look like this. I'm obsessed and I'm really impressed. This never happens. Let me just show you kind of close up. You can see how fluffy my lashes are and they don't feel weighed down, but it definitely built length and volume too. Do you feel like I need to cool down my um, brow color? So I'm just gonna take my Shuamura brow pencil, which is like really gray. I use the shade um, Seal, Brown, by the way, O2. I've gotten that question before. All right, that just made the look for me, but I'm moving on to what I think is the most exciting part of this Get Ready With Me, which is that Makeup by Mario sent over all of their new Super Satin lipsticks. This is the package. I can't believe they sent these all to me. It was very, very generous of them. So I am going to lip swatch all of them. There are 18 of them, so pray for me. <laughs> this is what the bullet looks like, and it's this beautiful matte black packaging. It does have a magnetic cap, and here is what the bullet looks like. I'm gonna lip swatch all of these without lip liner so you can see what the true color looks like. And let me give you a little bit of information about the lipstick and the formula. I'm going to apply these generally from lightest to deepest. They call this a classic creamy satin lipstick with a soft sheen. The shade names are all inspired by New York City and they say a single swipe delivers creamy, ultra comfortable color, perfect for luxurious daily wear. This unique formula glides on and grips lips in 18 shades, each named after an NYC neighborhood or area code. So this formula is definitely a grown up lipstick. It is full pigment and the formula itself has a bit of body to it. So you can feel it on your lips. It's very creamy, it's moisturizing, and you can feel it actually kind of coating your lips. I would actually consider this not just a satin lipstick formula, but a creamy satin in that it starts out creamy and I think throughout the day with wear, the creaminess subsides and you're left with more of a satin finish. I definitely feel like this is a lipstick that I would always pair with a lip liner. Because of that full pigment, I found it difficult to kind of stay within the lip lines without a lip liner and you can tell by the end of the swatches by swatch like, 14 or 15, I'm starting to get outside of the lines. It's getting a little bit haphazard. When you have a full pigment lipstick, having a lip liner um, helps soften the lip line a bit. Some people like a really, really crisp lip line, and sometimes I do too. But for everyday wear, I find that using a lip liner can help soften the intensity of a full pigment lipstick. Because it's a full pigment lipstick, to me, this feels a little bit more formal. It's like the kind of lipstick I wear if I'm gonna go out, if I want full glam. Or I could also sheer it out over a lip balm and kind of rub it in or blend it in with a finger for a more casual lived in look. Something that's really interesting to me about this shade range is that there are a lot of really sophisticated, smoky, kind of grungy cool tones. So there are a lot of cool toned nudes that seem to have a touch of gray, almost like a grayish undertone. And they also have this kind of grungy undertone as well. Even the rosy shades have a bit of smokiness to them. There's also a red in here for everybody. There's an orangey red, there's a true fire truck, fire engine red, there are cherry reds, smoky reds, brown reds, and to me the inclusion of all of these really interesting statement grungy tones makes this feel like a slightly more elevated lipstick than your everyday kind of lipstick. But there are also very wearable, easy everyday shades as well. So let me just share what I think are the standouts for me and my skin tone and my preferences. What I'm wearing now is actually a combination of the shade Soho, which I loved. It's this beautiful, really like 
bright, face brightening coral shade with Tower 28 Draw Me, which kind of subdued the tone a little bit. It made it a little less bright, but I did love the full impact of this shade on its own. I also really liked Nolita. This is one of those smoky rosy shades as well. It's like you think it's almost like an earthy rose, but there's a mauvey undertone to it that makes it a little bit edgier. I also really loved Dumbo. This was really interesting. It's almost like a brick rusty sort of, a brick rusty sort of shade, but not quite a full on red either. And I also loved Chelsea. I just love a really bright, true fire engine red, and that is as bright as it gets super face brightening, such a great statement red. So those are just a few that stood out to me, ones that I know I would immediately reach for, but I love that there are edgy shades, nude shades, a red for everybody, different undertones. It's a really cool release. And I think there are ways, even though it's a full pigment lipstick, I think there are ways to apply it that kind of dress it down for everyday wear or that give you a real statement lip for a going out glam sort of look as well. My lips are dead. <laughs> Even though this is a creamy lipstick formula and it's actually very comfortable on the lips, um, applying 18 full pigment lipsticks and removing them just like absolutely killed me. <laughs> it was a lot. So I hope it was helpful for you because it did take a lot of effort. Ooh, one thing I did wanna say is that I've noticed, I, or I noticed while lip swatching that a lot of the lighter shades um, have a white sort of base. And that is true for a lot of full pigment light shade lipsticks. You start out with a light base and then add pigment to it. When you apply that sort of shade, you just wanna be careful not to over apply because with a thicker lipstick formula, it can potentially gather in the lip lines, which is not a problem if your lipstick isn't a light shade, but when it's a lighter shade and it gathers in the lip lines, you can see it a little bit more like that ring. So you could just, do a little blot. And honestly, if it matches your skin tone, you're not even gonna really notice it. But I did wanna note that with the lighter nudes because I can see a lot of people reaching for a lighter nude paired with like a brown lip liner or a deep lip liner. Obviously, Mario is Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, so that kind of deep lip line with a lighter lip, that's a signature look that he does a lot. So I just wanna note that if you are going for the lighter nude lipsticks. All right, that I think is it. Um, I really wasn't sure how this look was going to go when it started out, but it got better and better and better. And now I feel really great. I feel like this is a very me kind of makeup, but a slightly elevated version of my everyday look. Let's go over everything really quickly. The brow products, um, not my favorite. The shade just wasn't for me. The products themselves were good, but it was just too warm. Uh, the OG foundation, I really liked it. It didn't give me as much coverage as I was expecting, um, just based on my initial impressions. But for a stick tinted moisturizer, I think it looks really beautiful on the skin. And I'm actually surprised. I would have expected by now for more oils to come through. It's been about an hour since I've applied that foundation. And that hasn't been the case. And I think it's because the formula itself is very thin for a stick foundation. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel tacky. It actually feels really weightless on the skin. And the shade actually did work out for me. That said, just know that you're not going to get even a medium coverage out of this. It's a light coverage complexion product. I loved the brush, as you could tell. Um, I used it for the foundation, the bronzer, the blush. It's a great size, very soft. To me, the Golden Contour Collection is really the shining star of the OG products that I tried. Like, I love this cheek look. I love the blush. I even love the contour, which I wasn't expecting to love. Like, you look at it and it's kind of like, a shimmery bronzer, but it does something really interesting and natural to the skin without really looking like you have contour on. The Topaz blush was gorgeous. That highlighter I love. And again, the cheek products like the foundation feel really thin. They don't feel like a heavy veil of color applied to the face at all. The powder, I'm gonna have to keep testing. I mean, it was so interesting. It went on feeling wet, um, the Hydra Blot Loose Powder but it's actually giving me pretty good oil control for now. 
I'll let you know again in a pinned comment how everything wears and I'm gonna have to keep testing this, but I'm really into it. I like the tone for my skin tone. If you're super fair, I don't think this will work for you, but if you're my skin tone or deeper, I think this beigey tone is really nice. For the eyes, the Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl, again, it's not a new formula to any of us. I did really, really love this shade and it was so much more complex and had more depth than I was expecting and I liked that. The mascara, instant, instant hit. I love this. I'm so excited to keep using it. It's so rare to love a mascara like this on the first use. And I really, at this point, know what works for my lashes. I need something thin that will build length, that won't drop my curl, and that will give me fluttery definition. And this did all of that and more. No smudging yet, I'll report back on that. And of course the lipsticks, um, I just gave you my full thoughts. I actually think this is the lipstick that's going to stick around because it is so uh, pigmented. I feel like once that creamy layer fades across the top, whether through eating or drinking, you're going to be actually left with a nice like pigment left over on the lips. I don't think it's going to fade off in like a splotchy way, the way that some matte lipsticks can. That's also something I love about a cream finish lipstick. And if I'm reaching for a full pigment lipstick these days, it's generally not going to be a matte lipstick. It is going to be a finish like this. So yeah, I can see this working for a lot of people. I can see a lot of people finding like a signature shade or even a signature nude shade in this range. So you guys will have to let me know what you think if you do pick it up. So I hope this was helpful. Again, I'll leave you my wear test results in a pinned comment below. And if you're new here and it's your first time watching, then I'd love for you to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.